Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Don't ask about the title. Starring Margot Robbie, Ewan McGregor and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. It's the latest comic book film from DC. Unlike Joker, um, it technically takes place in the same shared universe as the Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, etc. But as Warner Brothers is slowly moving away from focusing on a cohesive narrative between the films, because they managed to fuck that up spectacularly already, pretty much the only referenced movie is Suicide Squad. Fortunately, the references are tiny, so if you just know roughly who Harley Quinn is, you'll be fine. You don't have to subject yourself to watching Suicide Squad, which is pretty much torture. Alright, so we know that this movie has something to do with Harley Quinn, but what about those birds of prey, you may ask? Well, in the comic books, this was an all-female superhero slash vigilante squad adjacent to Batman. Their stories mostly took place in Gotham City as well. And over the years, the roster had many, many changes with characters going in and going out. The one key character that was the founding member and pretty much always on the team was Barbara Gordon, codenamed, codenamed Oracle. And the one character that was pretty much never on the team, except for one run that started four months ago or something, was Harley Quinn. So, in typical DC fashion, um, according to their <laughs> logic, I guess, in the movie there is no mention of Oracle, and Harley Quinn is the main character. Why, you may ask? Well, the answer is simple, and it's money. Uh, I think Warner Brothers was worried that Birds of Prey on their own wouldn't sell with a bunch of unknown characters, because, let's face it, outside of comic book fans, nobody knows those characters. And they already had Harley Quinn built up in Suicide Squad as a really fucking marketable character. I mean, despite the fact that Suicide Squad as a movie was panned critically, it wasn't liked by comic book fans, it wasn't liked by movie fans, it still made bank because regular moviegoers went to see Will Smith and Margot Robbie and then they went to, to stores to buy Halloween costumes for Harley Quinn. So now she gets her own movie, which for some reason, you know, money reason also has to do with the barely related to her female team. Now, not to spoil too much of the story, the entire movie is kind, movie is kind of an origin um, for the Birds of Prey. Uh, the rough outline is this. Harley and Joker broke up. She wants to be her own woman, but she has unfinished business with various people in town, including the gangster Black Mask, played by Ewan McGregor. He, on the other hand, apart from killing Harley, wants to get his hands on a diamond that in its Atomic structure has con contains details to some mafia offshore accounts, whatever, it doesn't make sense. The diamond falls into the hands of a girl named Cassandra Kane, and suddenly everybody in Gotham is out to get her. Black Mask, Harley Quinn, a vigilante called Huntress, um, a police detective, Rene Montoya, and Black Mask's reluctant driver slash singer slash employee, Black Canary. As the story unfolds, they all come clashing together sooner or later. All of that is told mostly um, through the eyes of Harley. In many scenes we get a voiceover from her where she explains stuff to the audience. It also impacts the chronology um, in a style that fits the character. The whole story is jumbled, there are scenes taking place out of order, we go back and forth to get additional exposition. There will be a scene starting and then it stops dead in its tracks and Harley says, wait, we didn't get to this part yet so we have to go back and I'm gonna explain something else. It's all very hectic and very kinetic, I would even say maybe relentless, but not always in a good way. Um, but I do want to start with elements that do work in this film, because there were some and, and that I liked about it. So, Robbie is once again pretty entertaining as Quinn, I think she sells the insane and zany persona quite well, and I liked multiple nods to Harley's background as an actual psychiatrist in the film, because we have some of those as well. Ewan McGregor is having a blast as Black Mask, he's just turning the ham to 11, chewing the scenery all the time, and I think he was my favorite character in the film. Some of the humor works um, in an absurdist, over-the-top way. Uh, my favorite running joke was laughing at Huntress being this edgy, serious, dark, you know, hero, and everyone else just thinking she's mad. In general, um, the film treats itself much less seriously than Suicide Squad, and tonally I think this, this is going in the right direction. Um, the film also has an R rating, and so the language and violence has been have been cranked up, and I think that makes especially the action sequences more entertaining. There are fights in here that are genuinely well shot and properly brutal, so points for that. Now, 
on to the problems. <laughs> Since I've just mentioned fight sequences, I need to point out that while the cinematography and the choreography is all right, and at times really great, it just seems like most of those fights don't make any sense from logical or logistical point of view. They just happen because we needed an explosive scene here, so let's just have it, no other justification. I know, I know it's a comic book film, but by now I've learned to expect some semblance of reason from those, so that element really took me out of the film. I mean, you've got guys with guns charging characters who have no weapons and then they just hit each other with fists and baseball bats and stuff. It What? Um, I think while Harley is also somewhat entertaining, um, making her a protagonist of the film is a bit too much. Um, her quirkiness quickly becomes tiring when she's in the spotlight all the time, and I'd, ra I'd much rather spend time with uh, the other characters, but they're all secondary at best. Um, Huntress herself is almost a background character, and I thought she was great, you know, I, I wanted to know more about her, I wanted to spend more time with her. And I think the charm of Harley Quinn as a character is that she's a foil to many other characters and the comic relief. But when she, you know, when she's the main one, it does feel out of place. Um, I said some of the jokes work, but the majority of them don't. I felt that the humor was in large parts quite forced. And uh, while most of the movie seems to, seems to very intentionally veer towards comedic tones, there is that theme of emancipation and hardly finding herself and yada 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 i i thought that was very heavy-handed and unnecessary and didn't work at all i don't know why the filmmakers even felt we needed that and then there's the narrative structure which as i mentioned is out of order as told by harley um, and couple that with the fact that almost every scene is set to a loud obnoxious pop song in fact, the climax fight has two songs in it, one right after the other. There's one song and it ends and then there's another. It's just, it's so overwhelming. I was sitting in the theater just thinking, Jesus, tone it down a little bit. I, I mean, I get what you're going for here, but it is too much. A lot of the time you just lose any coherence. And I think that the jumbled structure tries to distract the viewer from the fact that the plot as a whole is pretty weak and stupid. Um, so it looks like the filmmakers kind of knew that presenting this as a straightforward story would be a problem. So instead we get something that resembles a string of tied together music videos with little connection to one another. It's one set piece after another set piece, one song after another song without a shred of sense. And uh, that whole climax sequence um, just feels staged. I mean, it is entertaining in a way, but it feels staged and artificial, like something from an early 2000s action film. It's very odd and, and certainly not good. Finally, one thing that I have to talk about is, even though I know it's going to be a minor thing for most people, but I, I have to rant about this. There is a character in the film called Cassandra Kane, as I mentioned. She's the one that ends up with the diamond. Now, in the comic books, this was a total fucking badass, okay? She was the daughter of two powerful assassins, probably the, the most skilled assassins in the world of DC, trained from birth to be a killing machine. Her gimmick was that she wasn't taught to speak, but instead body language for her was the language. She was able to read the movements of her opponents and counter them and dismantle them that way. Through her training, she became one of the strongest martial artists in the world and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batman before eventually switching sides and becoming the second Batgirl. I mean, how fucking cool is that? You know, you've got a lot of potential with the character. Now, Cassandra Kane in the film, looks like this. And I know what you're going to say. Oh, you're mean because she's chubby and Asian. But looks can be deceiving. Okay, first off, I have nothing against her being Asian. I even have nothing against her being chubby. But... Fuck off with that. I mean, the movie version of Cass is nothing, nothing like the original. In fact, her entire character is this. She lives with foster parents, she swears a lot, and she's a pickpocket. And that's it. That's the, that's the whole thing. She doesn't actually have any skills that she did in comic books. She's basically a completely different character. She, she doesn't fight people. She's being protected. I couldn't believe this, honestly. Why the fuck would you do this? I mean, if you want this specific type of character in your story, that's fine, just invent a new one. 
call her Karen and be done with it. Especially as I'm pretty sure nobody outside of comic book fans knows her name, so it's not like regular people went, oh, Cassandra Cain is in the film, so let's go see it. So if you use that specific name, only the fans who know who that is supposed to be will recognize it. And I'm pretty sure that just like me, their reaction will be absolute outrage that the character was straight up destroyed. I mean, murdered, body bagged and buried. I don't know, man. It's, it's bonkers to me. But okay, rant over, back to the film. I ended up not liking it. Um, and so I was surprised to hear that the ladies next to me were having an absolute blast throughout. And when the movie ended, one of them turned to the other and said, wow, this was, this was brilliant. It's good that we came to see it. And the internet also seems to agree with them. A lot of the general audiences liked the film and there are many positive um, comments outside of critics. And I tried to think about that and maybe, maybe you know, it has to do with, um, with the increasingly short attention span oriented culture of today. Um, I mean, think of it like this. All those people that watch short Instagram videos or TikToks or whatever else, all those people that get on their phones while watching a TV series or a movie, anything longer than 15 minutes because they can't focus. Maybe a movie that is essentially a series of loud, bombastic, colorful, in-your-face sequences played to pop tunes is exactly what they need. Maybe they don't care about the lack of coherence and actual substance be behind it all because they just focus in on what's in front of them right now and then they, they enjoy those simple pleasures. I mean, I don't know, this is just a theory, but you know, art is subjective. If you want to like the film, that's fine, go ahead, I didn't. To me, the movie brought back memories of being at university and how sometimes friends would drag me to a club on a Saturday night. It's extremely loud in there. Everyone around you seems to be drunk or on drugs or both. There are girls in cheap looking costumes dancing around and occasionally something happens that makes you question your own sanity. And all the while I'm sitting in the corner, sipping on my overpriced beer and thinking, okay, I wanna go home. That's me watching Birds of Prey, unfortunately. It's a festival of bad jokes and well executed, but nonsensical action sequences that really gave me a headache as a whole. Although, if you consider that the protagonist is an Harley Quinn character, it really shouldn't be a surprise that the end result is a clown fiesta.